Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, December 27th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time 2020. The models are in, and they're not funny. Heavy snow in the Midwest. Iowa, take a look. Misery, completely covered in the global warming goodness, as well as Illinois and Nebraska. They can kiss it. But the big story, well, is our region. We're going to get the snow first. And winter storm watches are in effect across the country. Winter storm warning issued today. 8 to 18 inches with locally higher amounts. Holy macaroni. Mainly east of Highway 550. Guess where we are? Yeah, we're east of there. But the big story, New Year's Eve storm to move across the U.S. with heavy snow winds and severe thunderstorms. As we predicted seven days ago. Keep calm. <laughs> it's boom time. Now we don't necessarily like to gloat, but we nail it all the time. A lot of snow is expected to fall in the west, midwest, and southern plains as we hit the new year. Cold Arctic air in the east coast brought almost two feet of snow to western New York, and we'll get to that, and we'll get to more. New Year's week storm to spread rain and snow from coast to coast. We're look, I'm looking at predicting record snows from Austin, <laughs> yep, to Houston, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. <laughs> and we're going to get to that. Here is the overview. Phase one, storm tracks from southwest to midwest. Late week, phase two, new low forms and tracks to the Great Lakes. Low pressure will enter California late Sunday, then track inland across the southwest through Monday, which will be your fun day. Here is the Monday forecast. From Las Vegas to Denver, the global warming goodness will be falling. Salt Lake City and south looking for snow. Maybe a tippy touch by Albuquerque. Who knew? Here's your Tuesday forecast. That snow moves into northern Platte, Omaha, Kansas City, Minneapolis, and just a tippy touch of Chi-Town. We're talking northern Illinois. And they'll be annoyed in Kansas City with the ice falling in that region. So the storm will be developing. And Wednesday, it will be picking up steam. And it'll be moving east. Here's the snow and rain forecast through Wednesday morning. Iowa is the big winner. And we'll get to the models. Year-end snowstorm possible for Minnesota? <laughs> well, yeah. What about the other states? Iowa and others. National Weather Service Buffalo region sets new daily snowfall record at 18.4 inches. That's quite a few inches. And we're going to be checking those totals now at the snowfall analyzer. Yes, this is the snowfall analysis from the last 48 hours. Hours of powers. Look at the lake effect here. Whew. Holy macaroni. We're talking 18 inches in some regions. And yeah, that lake effect along all of Erie, along all of Ontario, pretty significant. Northern New York picking up that snow. Western PA, hello. And Ohio is not left out of the picture. We're going to quick check the GFS model here. And let's just walk you through. It's going to be a, a, a quick system moving from the west. Look at that. Boom. Huge deposit in the Sierras. Then it rushes across Nevada, Utah, and it makes its way right here in southwest Colorado. And then it quickly rushes across the plains. Biggest hit will be Nebraska, portions of southern South Dakota, and Iowa right through the middle stripe there. We're talking Cedar Rapids, uh, Quad Cities, and north, it looks like there. And then a second system right behind the tail. Look at this. Here's your December 31st, and that's New Year's. Hello, Texas, the nexus of the Schmexes in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Sauls. And, and that storm's going to move east. Look at these totals, folks. And I'm only bringing it to January 5th. But the New Year's boom is Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. We're talking just east of Austin, or just west of Austin. Totals that could hit 16 inches. So big story, record snow in Texas coming. So keep an eye out for that. As, well, the global warming goodness model develops. Look at these. This is like 10 feet of snow falling out here in the Northwest. Will this happen? Yes, it will happen. <laughs> so, so there's that. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. I told you this was going to happen four years ago, you prick. 
Eastern Norway picking up the heavy winter here. And Greta's boyhood home up here in northern Sweden is obviously looking quite deep. What a tweak. We're just going to go out here to New Year's Eve and then New Year's Day. They're going to be picking up several feet of snow in Greta's boyhood home, as well as Eastern Norway, which usually doesn't get it. It's the Western Cape there that gets pummeled. UK going to pick up snow for uh, New Year's Eve. Take a look at that. The Alps will already be buried. Northern Spain, Eastern France, Central France, Germany. Can we say, ah, oh, there's no snow in Africa? Okay, well, pretty normal picture. Maybe record's broken. We don't know. Seismic update. Oh, real quick. Let's go back, shall we? Quick look at the national picture. System moving through the Great Lakes. Storm arriving. Southern California and Southwest. A system lifting up through the upper Mississippi Valley and Great Lakes today and Monday will produce some heavy snow and gusty winds. Meanwhile, a storm system will arrive from Southern California to the Southwest later today into Monday. Expect locally heavily rain with possible flooding in Southern California. Heavy snow from the Sierras and Southern California mountains to the Central Rockies, straight across these purple regions. And we have winter storm watches in that Midwest region, which I just showed you is about to get pummeled. Seismic update. <laughs> now we're back. Big activity around the rim. We've seen a moderate uptick in five magnitudes since the, the Grand Conjunction, the Great Conjunction, lift. Uh, tilting that uh, uptick in seismicity on the Ring of Fire. I, uh, an uptick in activity in the South American region for days resulted in a 6.7, according to the USGS, hitting in 146 kilometers west-northwest of Coral, Chile. And that's been obviously followed by aftershocks. And we're going to look at the national scene here. They're reporting 6.4. So there you can see a discrepancy. Well, you can't see it here because it's cut off the screen, but I can assure you it's showing 6.4 to the left here. And that's just a fact, Jack. Real quick, we're going to go and do a volcanic update, but we have to do that by intertwining the seismicity with the volcanicity. And here we can see, uh, here is La Palma. Hello. It's boom time, kids. No, not necessarily, but there is the largest uptick in activity at La Palma since 2018, 2017, actually. And that's why we're bringing this to you as we can, as no one else. There's a, an earthquake just kicking off over here. Small mag, it's 2.2, but we want to come over here to La Palma, where this swarm has been occurring that we reported on. Don't be scared, be prepared. But I want to bring you over here to this swarm map because we're showing you only the earthquakes here now on La Palma. And this swarm began when we put the video out uh, a day ago or so. Here it is starting on Christmas Eve and it's running up here, are the, all the quakes Christmas Eve. And then now it's Christmas Eve still, that's the Christmas Eve swarm, still Christmas Eve and still Christmas Eve. That's a huge influx of magma. And here we are on Christmas Day, finally. Here's the first quake in Christmas Day. And now we're going up Christmas Day, Christmas Day, Christmas Day, day after Christmas. And the last quake happened, 1.5 magnitude, 738 UTC on the 26th. So there hasn't been a quake for over 24 hours, which is good news. The swarm has ended. That's good, but the magma is in place. The, the amount of quakes that have happened since the swarm began is epic in this region. A swarm like this hasn't happened for years, and this is a large amount of magma moving into this region. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this. Mark my words. This is a very important piece of geologic history that may be about to pop off. Worldwide Volcano News Update. There are more volcanoes to report on. Take a look at Etna. This is the picture coming just about 11 hours ago at sunrise over there. 12, maybe 12 hours ago now. <laughs> but Etna is on fire. There's like four fissures erupting. And people are posting uh, on Twitter and other social media that live in this region that Etna is completely safe. These are complete tards. These are people that didn't even look one second into the history of Etna, and let's break it down. Etna is a very dangerous volcano. It just hasn't been dangerous in recent decades. And so millions of people now live right next to this baby, unfortunately. As you can see in the picture here quite clearly, there's this glowing hellhole right here, and millions of people are just going about their daily day. 
Well, let's take a quick look at the eruptive history, and I can tell you that none of those people are safe. Uh, for one reason, there was a confirmed VEI-3 back in 1989 that scared the sh out of a lot of people and, and dumped ash on all those houses. But more importantly, this volcano erupts at VEI-4 and VEI-5, which would completely destroy and kill all those people. Last VEI-4 was back in 1787, right during the revolution. Are you feeling it? Are you picking it up? The cycle is repeating. So we could see a VEI-4 coming from Etna anytime soon. But more importantly, back in the older data, if we go back as early as, let's say, 122 BC, a VEI-5, due to historical observations, occurred, and another VEI-5 about 500 years prior to that. So this is no joking volcano. It's just not a tourist attraction uh, with walkways. And, and three years ago, my prediction was that tourists will be destroyed here. And, and unfortunately, White Islands was the first one to take out tourists. But this volcano will be even worse. Mark my words. And not only that, there are hundreds of thousands of people within close proximity of this. If it erupts at VEI-4, well, our prayers go out to those that live near Etna, which is completely safe, according to all the bloggers, just not the paleoclimatologists and geologists named Diamond. Now, quick update on Kilauea. Uh, the lava lake has now started draining, and the eastern vent started pouring out some of the drained lava that went in this vent. So this is an ongoing uh, event and it, it's still happening. Let's check it out. The eruption of Kilauea volcano continues. And scientists are keeping an eye on some changes in the new lava lake at the summit. On Saturday afternoon, the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory reported that the lava level in the crater had decreased by seven feet. The lava lake has been growing deeper ever since the new eruption began six days ago, being fed by two active vents on the crater wall. For most of that time, the northern vent has been the dominant fissure compared to the weaker western vent. Over the past two days, however, the northern vent has slowly been drowned by the rising lava lake. Shortly before 3 a.m. Saturday morning, the northern vent shut down after it was inundated by the rising lava level. Scientists report the vent even started to drain the lake. The lava level was estimated to be 583 feet deep when that happened. At around the same time, the western fissure began erupting more vigorously, spattering and producing streams of lava. The lava fountains were measured to be at least 32 feet high. The lower lava lake level has left behind a cooled ledge, which can be seen in this thermal image like the ring in a bathtub. The floating island of cooler solidified lava, which had been slowly drifting around in the lake until it grounded near the north vent, is now starting to slowly drift to the southeast. Several yards of lava level drop are also visible around the island's edges. The amount of sulfur dioxide being produced by the summit eruption has also dropped. Emission rates measured last night suggest that the number has decreased from 35 to 40,000 tons per day to somewhere between 16,000 and 20,000. Scientists say summit tilt meters continued to record slowing deflationary tilt until just before 3 a.m. this morning, when it switched to inflationary tilt. Seismicity remained elevated but stable. Let's quick talk about that. Uh, this, this could be bad news. This is the uh, initial output of lava filling that lake, and then it stopped. The lake began draining, and then inflation began happening. That means the lava is being fed back under the caldera and the ground is rising again. That means this eruption is going to continue to happen in pulses. As the lava comes in from the depths, it gets discharged at the surface and the surface goes up and down as it farts it out. So it goes back up as more lava comes in, it goes down as the lava gets squeezed out. Up as the lava comes in, down as the lava squeezed out. Now with this amount and volume of lava, there is a very high probability that some of this is going to get squeezed down aquifer, lava aquifer. Lava likes to travel down slope due to gravity. So it's going to try to travel down that east rift zone to the ocean, and the east rift may start erupting in days or weeks to come. So that is my analysis, unfortunately, and I'm sorry to bring that news to you if you're on the island.
The eruption remains confined to the summit caldera within Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and monitoring data show no changes to the Lower East Rift Zone or other parts of the volcano. Meanwhile, the National Park says rangers have cited dozens of visitors for ignoring closed areas and trying to get a closer look at the eruption. The Park Service says dangerous levels of volcanic gas, rockfalls, explosions, and volcanic glass particles are the primary hazards. The immediate area around the crater has been closed since 2007. Well, that means don't go there under any and all circumstances, unless you're an idiot. Crater edges along Kilauea. Covidiots with masks on think they're safe. Caldera are extremely unstable and collapses can occur at any time. Did you hear which that? Is why officials say Let's repeat collapses it. can occur at any time. Let's go back. Crater edges along Kilauea Caldera. One more time. Since 2007. Crater, Crater edges, edges along Kilauea Caldera are extremely unstable and collapses can occur at any time which is why officials say visitors should heed closure notices and barriers. HVO scientists will continue to monitor the eruption around the clock and keep a close eye on changes in the lava lake level. Amazing video. I love these guys. Uh, if you haven't, and I'm, I'm going to recommend them again, please come over here to Big Island Video News. Subscribe to the channel. Give them a thumbs up, tell them Diamond sent you, and say they're doing some of the most amazing work of any uh, volcanologists in the country currently. Now, Tanzania, to use local herbs instead of vaccine against COVID-19. Big win for Tanzania. That is the one country that you could move to if you could get there. Because if you want to travel next year, you may need a vaccine passport. Ho! We won't be getting that. Now, these eerie living stones in Romania are fantastical and totally real. They're called concretions. They're not growing. They're not ancient aliens. Uh, Mud Fossil University is completely illegitimate. And this can be explained through simple geochemical processes. But nonetheless, they are absolutely amazing uh, geological phenomenon called concretions and we can go look at them in Romania if we ever travel there and they're just fascinating for rock climbers and for nature observers so if you're more in, if you're interested in this type of stuff I will leave you links to this article where you can see what they call Trovants in Romania these Trovants in Ulmet known as the old ladies there they are these there's the old ladies Mud Fossil University would say there were two old ladies there that uh, were turned to stone like Medusa. Can you imagine? I can if I was five. Giant skeletons of enormous size discovered in New Mexico. This is the New York Times article from 1902, which is just one of dozens of similar articles that have been removed from history, removed from textbooks, and removed from the narrative. But... They are no less real than they are today. They exactly happened. There were witnesses. There were bones. There were scientists. And there is no chatter these days about these giant skeletons, which existed all over the Southwest, right underneath of my barn. Hope you got something out of the video. I'm creeped out now. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. As snow, well, it's going to get deep all the way down near Mexico. Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, as predicted, will be part of the New Year's blizzard. Not only that, volcanoes are erupting, earthquakes are happening, and La Palma is unstable. Can you believe this? Whew. That's Etna. Holy macaroni. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the boxes illuminating around you for more illumination and knowledge and some humor. And that's a boomer. Na, 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 na.